Dr. Nandi Azikiwe once said, when two incompatibles meet, they can coexist if only they agree to agree and agree to disagree. But Nigeria, can we ever agree? My learned senior and mentor, G.T. Ogunye, senior advocate of the masses, recently said, a country does not survive solely because of false unity. It survives on purpose and fruitfulness. This Nigerian house, he said, is falling. Today, if it is not agitation for Odua Republic, it is movement for the actualization of Biafra, or Arewa threatening to send Igbos packing from the north. How about Boko Haram, Fulani headsmen, or a theft and militancy, or the once upon a time OPC? Why is the previous government granted amnesty to militants who didn't ask them for it? The current government sees Biafran agitators as miscreants that must be crushed while rehabilitating repentant members of Boko Haram. Yet the victims are still crying daily for succor from the same government. If this is not injustice from a motherland, then I wonder how else you would define it. Yet, we mouth the unity of Nigeria is non-negotiable. I laugh in vernacular. Some stakeholders have canvassed for fiscal federalism or returned to the 1963 Republican Constitution, while others have argued that we either restructure, discuss our coexistence through a referendum, or go our separate ways. And like my brother and friend, Barrister Tio Nwibu, once asked, are we really afraid of going our separate ways if that will guarantee justice, fairness, equity, peace, and security? I leave you to be the judge of that, though. Why countries like Czechoslovakia, Yugoslavia, and USSR have all separated to foster equality, justice, security, and ethnic nationalism? We are here preaching unity in Nigeria, yet we have no solution to the genocide in South Kaduna, the illegal but officially condoned arms in the hands of killer headsmen, kidnappers, bandits roaming the country, the technically defeated Boko Haram, the amnesty militant or the kidnappers. How about the corruption, nepotism, ineptitude, and barefaced selfishness and planlessness on the part of the political class, president, governor, lawmakers, and their likes? Make we sit down there, they deceive ourselves. Czechoslovakia, which had a population of 16 million people, less than Lagos population, separated into Czech and the Slovakia on the 1st of January, 1993. Yugoslavia in 1991 was 23.2 million, barely more than Lagos population. It broke into six countries same year, all along ethnic lines, namely Bosnia, Herzegovina, Croatia, Macedonia, Montenegro, Serbia, and Slovenia. In Europe, the UK permitted regional autonomy to the Irish, the Scots, and the Welsh, while the English dominated Westminster. Switzerland has four ethnic groups. Each of them rotates the presidency annually through seven cartons that constitute the Federation unit. These countries, like every other, might have their poor problems, but they are stronger and fostering, fostering independent today. I will therefore advocate, as posited, by Professor Wale Shoinka and Professor George Obiozo and a lot of other scholars, apart from those in government. Nigeria, as presently constituted, is structurally flawed and badly configured. If not restructured, either along regional lines or allowed to discuss their cohabitation to whether agree to agree or agree to disagree, it might give way forcefully without the opportunity of proper tailoring. The North, if properly harnessed, can not only feed the entire West Africa but can become a new Dubai. The Southwest can enhance our creativity to become another Silicon Valley if they weren't waiting for revenue from a feed bottle center. The Southeast, with accountable leadership and right infrastructure, can become the Japan of Africa, while the South-South can be able to look inward for possibilities that abound around them. Then we will indeed understand that united we fall, divided we stand. <clears throat> um, oh my goodness. Yeah. I love the it. compartmentalization <laughs> of Nigeria. That the East can become the Japan of Africa because they have these fabrications and things they, they're technically smart. That the North can actually feed not only Nigeria but West Africa. Their tomatoes and onions and ginger and the rest of them. And then the Southwest or the West can be the Silicon Valley. We're smart, we're creative. You've touched on creativity, which is actually what we have. And then the East as well. But you remember on this program, I talked about this 
national conference not leading us anywhere. What will happen if we divide ourselves along these lines of strength? What is it that we find in Nigeria must be one? Nigeria must be one. Meanwhile, if you have a particular number for, 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 for secondary school entrance examination, you will not get admission in the West, but you'll get admission in the North because the, the, the points are lower. Same for university. So I can be as smart as can be in the West and I can't get into the university. And someone that has less than half of what I scored in JAM will get to the university in the North because of quota system. It's just not right. I think we can still, we can still do this uh, just right. by just devolving powers. Like if we go back to the 1963 constitution, That's we can have the country divided into the regional. six regions. Like we and had then we can now have different constitutions at those levels that is peculiar to the need uh, of those regions. And from there, the resources in those regions, we can now make legislations at the respective region to boost our creativity and our strength. The North, they are very good in agriculture and so many other net, uh, mineral resources that's in the North, and the huge deposit of uh, gold right. and uh, all that in the North. Then in the, in the Southwest, you have a lot of Isn't resources gold too. In you understand? So <laughs> if we're able to, even with one country, but with a proper structured federal system of government, we can establish good uh, contact with the component unit, weaken the center, and then this component unit you know, will generate positively right. to build a great uh, country. I, I think, um, you know, it's, it's kind of like very easy to, to say prefer some center, of those things we're know. talking about. <laughs> but the, <laughs> the practicability of it yes. is where the challenge is. Don't forget that, yes, the aberration, the military aberration is what got us to where we are yes. today. We would have learned, would have evolved because we had our regional yeah. system and yeah. they had their own peculiar yeah, problems as well. Yeah. However, there are examples that we can learn from. I always use Rwanda. You know, when there's no love, mm -hmm. when there's a disconnect between the, the citizens and the, their, the leaders, their leaders. Yes. there's definitely, because as an average Since Nigerian, you understand, you don't, feel, you don't feel that connect with the country. No pipe bond water, you can hardly afford to own a home, no, no education, belonging. health, all the necessary things that would associate you to that country that would make you proud to hold a flag is missing. We need to reconnect with our people. We need to let them feel that there is a contract between them, you understand, and the leader. And yeah. then we'll begin to talk about, because honestly, all this fracturing we're talking about is not going to take us anywhere. Bolaha wants to reconnect. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I, I, I believe Nigeria can be won. Absolutely. But the pre-1966 situation is what we need to look at. I cannot believe that a canoe that was doing leather trade in millions of dollars with yeah. Euro yeah. hundred years ago. Yes. Today goes to Abuja to go and beg for oil money from the South. Mm. How many states are feeding Nigeria? Maybe about four oil states and a few other states with taxes. Then the rest are there. Every month they go to Abuja to go and collect stipend. We are killing this station, nation every day that we remain as we are. The nation is grossly suboptimal because the states are not doing anything other than distributing wealth that they do not work. We need to restructure this. We need to restructure the country that you said, and truly, that has been the argument. The end always seems to come too soon on the advocates. However, even when we leave the studio, the advocates continues on our social media platform, on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, Hashtag the Advocate NG and on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag the Advocate NG. And to catch up with previous broadcasts, simply go to plustv.com forward slash the Advocate NG. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. Till next week, same time on this station, let's keep advocating for a better society. I'll see you then. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed. It's that 
mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. That's I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you.